Right, my guest, Glenn Kellaway, K E L L E W A Y, and he works out of, uh, you work out of your house just like I do, right? You betcha. In Maple Ridge, so overhead's a little bit lower, although I find that my overhead's higher working out of my house. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a reason for it. I'll explain that after in just a couple of seconds. Um, you've got a phone number, and what's your phone number? My phone number is 604 476 0053. And I have a toll-free number anywhere in North America. I've received calls from people in the States and actually Alaska. Mm -hmm. um, it's 1-866-476-0053. Now, does that mean you can do a mortgage for somebody in San Diego? If they're buying property in Canada, yes. Ah, okay. So if somebody's coming up from San Diego to buy a piece in Whistler, yes. they should go see... Then go. Give me a call. We'll take a look what they're looking to buy, what their specific situation is, and how we can get that done for them. And you've got an email address, which is uh, Glenn. Is it Glenn at Mortgage at Right or some such thing? Yeah, it's abbreviated MTG for Mortgage, IT for IT, and RIGHT for Right.com. Dot com. And uh, you will take, uh, you, you actually will work, because you phoned me once in a while, say, what do I have to do to make this deductible? Mm hmm and uh, you will work with people to help them make their mortgage deductible as opposed to 99 out of 100 mortgage brokers and every bank manager and every credit union manager that don't have a clue how to do it. Yeah. I mean, I have to be careful because clients are fairly, sometimes situations are very unique, but a file I worked on recently looked at a client with a portfolio of rental properties and the existing mortgage structure on the principal residence was, was such that there was a line of credit that they could draw down on and a fixed rate mortgage in the mid to high five range. And we looked at seven to $10,000 a month of revenue coming into, that, into that, the, the cash flow. So a quick calculation said he could hit his prepayment privilege, take six months of income, and that would bring him up to about $50,000, roughly because he had a, another couple of grand coming in from another property he was buying. And he could take that $50,000 and prepay his mortgage before his anniversary date next year, and then after that anniversary date, he could prepay another 50000 So in the space of about 12 months, he could wipe out $100,000 of mortgage debt. No, which not deductible mortgage debt. Of non-deductible mortgage debt. Flip that over to his line of credit, which is running, at, in his case, at 2.25%, 2 and a quarter percent right now. So that 5 and a, five, well, let's say 5.5% for simple numbers of interest that he's paying with with uh, with uh, after-tax dollars would become a debt at two and a quarter percent right which now, is deductible. which is deductible. And the simple math in showing him that it was going to save him five to ten thousand dollars just going forward on that. Now, now, in his situation, and this is where I look at clients, is with all of these properties, we looked at and we said, well, you're going to sell this one, this one, and that one maybe. So maybe we don't want to take all of that money because as you explained to me, and I had, a, I had asked about that, is if he sells one of the assets and doesn't reinvest that money, that money that he's made tax deductible from the process we talk, we'll talk about could, uh, could end up causing him some grief. Oh, so that's a good point. We'll talk about that too. Yeah. Um, we got, is this a good place for a little quick break? Okay. Yeah. We're going to come back. We're going to do these into little segments, yep. so, so the audience understands. We do little nine, ten minute segments, because sure. then they go on YouTube. Oh, perfect. Okay, so somebody wants, uh, I don't know what we call that one, Ingram's bankruptcy or something, but, uh, and uh, introduction and yeah. making mortgage deductible. Sure. So my guest, again, Glenn Kellaway, and uh, you find him out in Maple Ridge working out of his house, and the phone number, Glenn, is... 604-476-0053, uh, or make it toll-free anywhere in North America at 1-866-476-0053. Yeah, because this is around the world, and people do yeah. watch it from San Francisco and San Diego and... Uh, Trinidad, and they, they watch it from around the world. It's, it's really cool. Um, we do have an open line phone in, but I didn't advertise it today because I changed guests and I wanted to make sure, so I haven't left it open for people to phone in. The only phone in times, I said, were to phone in after 8 o'clock because I've got about seven questions there that I offered to answer to people that have written me questions. Okay. Um, but if you do happen to be watching live on uh, Wednesday night, November 18th, 2009, you can phone Glenn and I at 1-866-980-0499, and uh, we'll pay the phone call, and you get to talk to Glenn or myself. 
Uh, if you've got a tax question, you can phone right now too. That would be okay. I am going to answer some tax and immigration questions at uh, 8 o'clock though. And I see Moggs the cat has come over to visit us and she's likely mad at me because I stuck her out in the rain today. Um, the question of getting a mortgage when you're bankrupt. Is there a mortgage time now that you, is a bankrupt possible to get a mortgage or have they all still got a two year wait until two years has gone by and then we'll give them a mortgage? Reestablish the, the first thing, and I've seen many people go through um, bankruptcies. Uh, as as people go through life changes, divorce is one that I've seen affect credit histories on a lot well, of clients. Worst thing that happens to somebody. Yep. So in the event, but you know why they're so expensive? <laughs> okay. <laughs> why? Well, they're worth it. Oh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is where. <laughs> Sometimes I go, oh, way too much information as I hear something from a client. Because I'll work with him and her as, as a couple, and then two or three years later, they will be going their separate ways, and I'll put a dividing wall down the middle and work with the clients as they're going in their, their separate ways. But it's, yeah, sometimes you hear stuff and you just go, uh, okay. I'm going to give you a little hint then. You keep on. Keep, keep yeah. on with your So deal. with the bankruptcy idea there, if you come out of bankruptcy, you are discharged from your bankruptcy on the day you're discharged or even before if you can if you can start establishing your reestablishing your credit that is with a secured credit card save up a grand or two go to home trust or whoever sometimes your banks will do it the credit unions usually they want two thousand to give you a one thousand dollar credit uh, credit facility get a secured credit card three to four months later or five months later usually it's going to take that it's going to take four to six months for that actually to register on there because don't forget when you get the credit card application today and you send it in to the secured credit card company um, Capital One would be another one that's out there it's going to arrive so if it arrives in the beginning of the month let's say the beginning of November it's going to be, they will be sending out a card to you somewhere mid-November. It's going to be almost a month later before they send you an invoice that says pay whatever you've used on the credit card. And then it's going to be a month later than that. So we're running about 60 days before it's actually going to report to the credit bureau. And you need to get a few reports on the credit bureau before it has any sort of an impact on that. And one of the things that with people that go through bankruptcies is they don't pull their credit history right at the time they get discharged or at least a month or two after and go through and find out that, oh, that credit card was included, but they still show a balance or there's other judgments or anything else. They have to do a tidy up routine and going through a after a bankruptcy. Quite often I'll see people three or four years afterwards, they have not got any other credit. They've been working great. They've saved up money, but they have no reestablished credit. One year of reestablished credit, usually they want to see two but one year of good reestablished credit and a good rebuilding of an, um, a down payment resource, they've been putting $1,000 away every month or whatever, maybe they'll get a little gift from his family, that we can get. So all we need is a minimum of a year. Typically they want to see closer to two, but a minimum of a year. Sometimes we can bring in a cosigner if we need it for the strength, but a minimum of a year is what we would like to see. All right. So it was unreasonable of me at the time to expect that I would get a mortgage right away. At, a, at an ultimately discounted rate that was available in the market, getting something at a slight premium of maybe, what we say, 2 or 3 percent uh, above that. Richard uh, gave me my mortgage at the going it was mortgage very, rate for that. It was at, I think it was at the posted rate. It wasn't the full yeah. discount. So yeah. it was about 150 basis point, or what we call 1.5 percent or 2 percent off. But it was certainly better than the going rate that was available from some of the other, uh, shall we say, subprime lenders that were available at the time. Not really subprime at that time because that came in a, about a year and a half later. But anyway. No, good. Um, yeah, you phoned me and you offered to do something and you put it through. And since then, I've sent you several people that you have... Uh, done a yeoman's job of. Thank you. And uh, so let's talk about.